You can convert text into real world art images using your own computer and you can run an open source AI model that can do all of that on your local computer. And also it's gonna have a really awesome web interface. So all you need to do is just like put that in here, you just tweak out the parameters, click generate, and that's gonna generate a plethora of awesome images for you in here, just very easily with one click. So if you wanna find out more on how to install it, how to run it locally, and what it's capable of doing, generating images and all the crazy stuff that it can do, well, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you've probably already heard about the shift, the huge shift that actually happened in the AI industry in the last couple of weeks, which is actually releasing a free and an open source with weights, open source code, and, and literally everything that you need to run a full AI on your computer that can actually generate or just convert text to actual images. So this also model called Stable Diffusion, and it's actually on the Stability AI website in here, uh, made by these great folks in there. And like that AI actually has been made open source before, and that's what literally that can AI is actually capable of. Of course, you see those like user generated images using Stable Diffusion. That's crazy. But in, sometimes you might need some huge power or computational power to generate really high quality images. Uh, but you got the point that you can actually do that with an actual AI that you can run it on your own computer. So this is actually the GitHub page of the Sable Diffusion AI, and you can just go ahead and check it out. It's already 23K stars uh, since it actually has been released, and you clearly see those are actually just a sample of images that were generated by the Sable Diffusion uh, AI in here that has been released. So it got everything that you need to actually take this one and actually run it on your own computer. And the awesome part about it is actually has weights available. So weights are released, so you don't need to take the model and actually pre-train the model. So you can just go to like hugging face.io uh, and you can actually grab the uh, checkpoints like the training checkpoints and you can use those checkpoints to literally run the actual model on your own computer and, and I absolutely love this and in fact I was able to run this on my computer so if you're interested to run this on your own computer you can jump to another repository which is a fork of the computer fusion, stable diffusion, it's called like, uh, I think Einstein stable diffusion something. And uh, yeah, this is actually a great repo. I, I would appreciate that help like by this, like the guy who made this actual repo in here. This one is a lot better. It has actually uh, like, you know, now it's actually supports and it can run on low end computers by just like down sampling the images and all sort of stuff. And plus you can install this on Linux, Windows, and Mac, and it has actually instructions to do all of those. And particularly for Mac, you're gonna have, be needing to have like an M1 chip on that Mac. So likely for me, I got like an M1 Max in here, but for others, you're probably gonna need to like an NVIDIA based graphics card with four gigs of like VRAM or more. Um, likely for us, we got an M1 Max with a 64 gigs of RAM, which is gonna be like used as the same as the VRAM. So we are in the green line. So of course, if you have a Mac or other computers for me, a Mac in here, I just follow this one in here. Uh, like like downloading the checkpoints, which is almost five gigs and, you know, signing up and having all the dependencies installed here from Anaconda and just like starting using PIP and Python, all the, you know, the stuff that goes with AI and machine learning. But after that, you're actually going to be able to run this. And I actually was able to run this after a lot of effort and actually trying to debunk this in here and there. Eventually, I was able to run the model. So I already cloned the repo, installed everything, it's working fine. So I just need to run Python script and I need to run the dream.py scripts in here with full precision. So full precision here is gonna allow you to have a huge good resolution with some you know computational codes. I would definitely agree with that. And the dash dash web in here is gonna allow you to open up a web server and you can have a, like a web interface that you can interact with without the command line, which is so, so nice. So after running this, of course, it's gonna be like taking a couple of seconds to initialize, load the models, of the checkpoints and everything. But after that, it's actually gonna run so smoothly. So this is actually the web interface and what it looks like, it has a couple of different stuff. This is where you enter your text and here's like the number of images that you need to generate and the steps. So the steps are like the very important parameter that you need to keep an eye on because they're like play a major role on how good the image is gonna be generated and how long the model is gonna take to generate the image. And of course, it's gonna like the more steps you're gonna be introducing, the better quality you're gonna get, the better um, kind of like, you know, the the image and, and, and more of like the context that you're gonna get inside of the image. Plus that's gonna be like costing more or like computational power. So in the paper in here, they they basically said like it's it's best value is 250, but 250 is 
is way too much for you know a slow computer or whatever so you can you can experiment with it but it's going to take more of like five minutes or six minutes per image if you do that and if you choose like width and height of an image by like 512 by uh, 512 uh, i won't recommend going any higher than that because that is going to take acts absolutely so long like 1024 which is the maximum this one can basically like take you um depending on the actual image and the stamps like 150 steps and a 1024 i tried out before and it took me like about uh, 15 minutes or even more so yeah um yeah but, but right now in here what it takes for this like steps it takes around 30 ish seconds uh with like 512 by 512 and there are actually a couple of samplers that you would want to choose with uh the best sampler it is put in the docs of like st stable diffusion which is the plms so i'm sticking with that in here and you can play around with a lot of stuff more so this is actually text to image and you can have an initial image that you can have the model take that image and actually modify it. and this this like image or image to image kind of like uh initial Initialization technique is really good with stable like stable diffusion. It can allow you to have really awesome results from that. So I've been I've been like, like working with this and playing around with it, and it looks absolutely amazing. And so yeah, so as you see, I already experimented with this. Actually, that's those are all the images in here are were generated by stable diffusion. Some of them are pretty good, like the God of War in here, for example, or you like the uh, maybe the forest in here, the Kagi uh, dog in here, which uh, of course I, I brought this from like. Google's and I try to do the initial image and uh, the birds in here they look absolutely incredible um the pandas sometimes you get black ones that doesn't work perfectly um you know women in a blonde doesn't look really that good uh some comics uh the Eiffel Tower plenty of stuff I've been experimenting with this like the past couple of days and it got really good results and a really bad result for stable diffusion so I can't say like you know stable diffusion is the best thing or the, the worst thing so let's go ahead for example and try to generate some text in here like sun explosion into a fog in outer space with high quality and photorealistic and um, yeah I'm gonna leave steps to be 150 width and height 512 and I'm gonna choose BLMS in here and for the seed in here is actually a number you can introduce so whenever you enter the same text and the same seed you're going to have like the same results so you can do like whatever i can just introduce 200 whatever in here and that is it so just click generate and of course depending on your computer you can take more or less than that so for example if you take a look at the terminal where this is actually running this can take like a minute so it's like a minute around a minute kind of ish i think that's that's basically or mainly because i'm recording in here and yeah so like for the first one i got a black one so sometimes it goes wrong something goes wrong with the stable diffusion and produces some black images but the second try i got this this image in here it doesn't look that perfect it it kind of looks like an explosion and everything in here uh like the sun explosion it's an outer space but i i don't know it doesn't make a lot of sense for me so it's not like that perfect and of course you got to try a lot more times you can try it a second time you can get like 10x better results or even worse than that so it all depends on how many times you're going to be running this and how descriptive your text actually is so if you want to know how actual stable diffusion in general or like the you know whatever other kind of like ai like dali 2 or imaging you know just like in in, in the basic aspect of how these ar can actually convert natural text like text you put in into an actual images how we can do that what's what's the power behind that and by the way those images are all like generated from from st like stable diffusion it's put in their docs and their examples so that is absolutely great okay so how it works of course it starts with an actual text like two robots dining with an eiffel tower in the background or maybe fine dining or whatever and the first step is obviously like take encoding the actual text so it takes the text it converts it and it does the transformation to tokens all the stuff like you know you do with like natural or nlp uh, and after that you're going to use c lip or clip in here i'm going to call it clip image similarity which is another model like created by open ai and that model is actually so great so it actually allows you to figure out the similarity between the actual text and and other images and everything so it tries to put that it actually gives you the similar images only that like the tokens in here uh, are pointing to and after that you're going to have into the diffusion model so the diffusion model here was going to take is the text encoding and it's going to try to do the diffusion process and convert that into, into actual image pixels and how the diffusion process basically works is pretty simple so you just like you take an actual image like a cat image in here and you try to introduce some noise into that image so the ai actually is going to be going ahead and like or the model is going to 
put some noise into it has like full noise you can't actually distinguish the the noise out of the actual image data and after that it's going to do like a reverse denoising process and how that's how actually the training process is actually going so when it denoises that it gets back to the original image data and that's what actually um, like image diffusion or diffusion model actually what it does behind the scenes so that's the diffusion model it gets all of those data then eventually you're going to be doing like reverse diffusion because usually how data is actually stored in noise in here like in gaussian noise in here so the reverse diffusion is often you're like taking that noise and comparing it to the actual testing code in like doing a matrix or whatever and just getting into like in, in like a final image and that's what reverse diffusion that actually does and obviously so after encoding into pixels and everything it's going to get gets you the actual image and by the way this particular image you see two robots dining in front of like or while like the eiffel tower is in the background this is a real image that has been generated by stable diffusion i was so impressed when this happened it's really nice image the, the robot looks pretty good the reflection looks pretty good it looks pretty realistic like in a sci-fi movie or something and yes it all happened in my computer in here i haven't introduced that much and it took that particular one in here and actually finished with this one in around like less than a minute so that was incredible so we're going to do the comparison here between dali 2 imaging like google imaging ai and dali 2 in here and google imaging in here as well as the stable diffusion so uh, i don't have unfortunately access to dali 2 or imaging ai so i can't just grab the prompts and actually put them myself and try this out like a custom prompts of, of like my own but what i what i've done in here is actually brought photos for example i put photos like put by the community who have access and actually they tried it out and it brought the actual prompts of these and actually just put them side by side and just quick disclaimer in here before running so dali 2 images or imaging images are probably generated by very powerful computers with very good gpus maybe tpus so that actually doesn't mean stable diffusion is not that good because i literally have that running on my own machine in here with like an m1 max it doesn't even have that really good powerful gpu and plus i'm not just obviously dali 2 in here is running on the cloud so you, it has a lot more potential than running it on a local computer in here that doesn't mean like you know stable diffusion isn't good so i don't want to just like blame stable diffusion for my own stuff in here so i'm just i want to give you guys the chance to try it out with yourselves because sometimes it looks really good and sometimes it looks quite bad like these images in here for example like a realistic photograph of a young woman with a blonde hair so literally that one this is dali 2 so i mean that's just crazy just generated by an ai in here i mean like it can't distinguish this from a real woman or an ai generated woman um, but literally this one the stable diffusions one is absolutely like terrifying and kind of like uh, so bad especially in the eyes so i found like an issue with with the saber diffusion I, I noticed that it doesn't handle the eyes or the hands really well uh, it does handle everything else good like decently in the face but eyes are and and hands are just not really that well and for example in here we got a photograph of a cyborg exploring tokyo at night and uh, yeah it looks this is dali 2 so it's really good and the stable diffusion one looks pretty good too it just shows you a talk you uh, it doesn't show you a cyborg i don't know why maybe if i just tried it a couple of times i would got a better result but i tried this only once and this is what i got um maybe the synth wave aeroplane and dali 2 obviously is just perfect and i brought these like mostly from uh, either websites or other communities just running these with the proms the stable diffusions one uh this the first one in here the first prompt it doesn't look very promising the other one that actually blew my mind in here in quality in terms of quality and not in context which is a corgi's head depicted as an explosion of a nebula so literally that one look look at dali 2's one it just it makes a lot more sense it's a nebula exploding and it just generate this corgi's head i uh, like depicted from that and look at the stable diffusions one it doesn't look like it's a nebula exploded but more of what the corgi looks pretty awesome it looks pretty well blended with the actual space in here the outer space and it has this kind of like uh glowing effects of a nebula explosion maybe so i'm i'm pretty pretty happy with this one and this and i'm particularly this particular photo in here or this particular image i brought it from the imaging official website so this was put by google not the community the other one the stable diffusion one pretty decent it, it shows you times square it shows you a blurriness that's actually that's a photograph and i 
I can't say much about it because it looks pretty good. There's some inconsistencies and some stuff that you can't actually understand. What are these green stuff in here? So it doesn't do the blending really well, but the Corgi looks pretty awesome. It's very high quality. It looks, you know, shows you the all the details that Corgi has. And what actually blew my mind was the image to image generation, where you actually, if you get stable diffusion, you can choose like an initial image. So you put an initial image, you can put some text in here, and the stable diffusion try to pick up the image and work from that. So it's gonna like start from that particular image. And that can actually create so interesting stuff. So for example, we got the image to image in here, I provided this image, which is uh, pretty, you know, just like it looks pretty, uh, kind of like an artwork of, of two birds, like hanging on the trees in here. And literally that what it gave me it gave me pretty awesome results. And I was like, so I mean, I was so surprised by this particular result from the stable diffusion, it looks so nice. It just the the green in here, the actual branches, literally everything looks pretty good. 